Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, number 93, I believe. Wow. 90, well, 92? Maybe it's 92. Maybe it's 93. We're in the 90s. Somewhere in the 90s. We're going to reach 100 <laughs> some, sometime in 2023. That's right, we are. I can actually probably even count looking at the calendar. Uh, so, anyway, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. Especially if it has to do with home voiceover studio technology, which, by the way, is what we know the most about of anything. I mean, we know some other stuff, too, but we're ready to roll here. It's time for Tech Talk on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk And we have to lead off since this will be next week. It's like put on your yamaka. It's time to celebrate Hanukkah. So absolutely, eight crazy nights. So you know, which night is the craziest? Or are they all pretty much evenly crazy? First night's usually pretty crazy. Last night's the craziest. Gotcha. Because so it you starts get the most and ends candles, big. and it's like there's right. se- seven ca- seven candles. The most melted wax, right? And one in the middle. So, no, eight candles. What am I talking about? Eight candles. <laughs> I thought it was nine one- candles. No, no, no. Isn't it four and four, and then a big one in the middle? And the big one in the middle. That's okay, the shamus. That's, that's the, the one that used to light the other, other candles. Ones. That's oh, right. Because that that one doesn't count. That's got right. it. Got it's, it. It's it's there. But anyway. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah to all of those who celebrate the Festival of Lights. Anyway, uh, we're here because George and I know more about home voiceover studios than anybody else combined. Because we've been doing this for a long time. I mean, I'm, I know I've been teaching it for like 15 years. And, you know, as we like to say, you know, you teach best that which you need to learn most. Yeah. So I've, yeah. I, the more we teach... The more we learn. That's right. Absolutely. So there's there's really nothing new under the sun until somebody shows us something new Did under the sun. Did you see this new thing? And I go, no, oh. you don't need that. <laughs> you really don't need it at all. <laughs> but that's what we do. We're here to help you get set up and maintain your home voiceover studios because everybody's got to have one today. Uh, the pandemic made it mandatory. But it also is just important because you've got a lot of producers out there that are like, you know, it's cheaper to work with somebody in a home studio if their home studio is good. And it's and, you know, and again, if it sounds good, it is good. Uh, Right. That's right. You know, and more importantly, you have the paid version of Source Connect, which seems to be the the one that most agents seem to be asking about. Yeah. Uh, and, And setting that up usually takes. Mr. Widom's help. Um, Used to be, you know, their support has gotten really good. That's good. They have their own academy now. It's it's really, a, they've stepped it up big time. That's good to hear. Yeah. But if you'd like help with your home voice studio, aside from watching this show, which you should all be doing anyway, uh, you can get in touch with us individually. George and I have our own businesses and we, you know, we consult with each other about certain things. But, you know, we... We work on home voiceover studios. And if you'd like to work with George, who knows more about this stuff than anybody I know, aside from me, where do they go? You go right here. <laughs> oh, that's, right that here. makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, for the podcast listeners, I'm referring to my T-shirt. Uh, GeorgeThe.Tech. That is my home on the web. 
soon to have a new website. I know I listened to Dan teasing his new website for months and months. Now it's my turn. I <laughs> mean, it's actually up. <laughs> I've been te- no, I've been teasing it. <laughs> oh, I'm still teasing still, it. Still teasing. <sighs> Maybe January 1st we'll have the new website. Um, But anyway, that's where we go for tech support. You can schedule sessions with me and actually a few others on our team, Tim Friedlander and uh, and Rich Green now. You can schedule sessions with them automated through the website. Call for emergency support if you need it desperately. Um, and Or just get a sound check, or as Dan likes to call them. My specimen collection cup. That's right. Over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. It's now on the top of the page. So when you come to homevoiceoverstudio.com, there it is. And for $25, I will give your audio thorough analysis. And I've been doing this a long time. It takes, what, five, ten seconds to know what's going on in somebody's yeah. studio. It takes longer to type it that's, than it does to, uh, that, to that's, hear it, that's for sure. That's true. But you yeah. know, there's nothing new under the sun that I, you know, I haven't heard. I'm like, okay, you know, the, all right, you, got, you sound like you're under a shelf. You, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a loud hum in the background that is also at the same frequency of your voice. Your microphone's facing their own direction. And which happens, you know, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. How many times do people say, Hey, you know, why, why does my audio sound so weird? Because oh, you're talking into the wrong side. sound really line. weird and boxy and, and yeah. 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 Although, oh, great, yeah, of course the other one is. You're talking through the mic on your laptop. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, that, so. I mean, that happens to the best of us, I'll <laughs> tell you. But we'll recognize the sound of those problems within seconds and yeah. let you know what's what's happening. So. All righty. All right. Well, to start off this Hanukkah week tech talk number 92, I think we it, it is actually 90. I could be wrong, but. <laughs> Who's counting? We well, aren't. We apparently not. <laughs> Sue is, I think. <laughs> She's like, oh. What, She's like, come on, you doing? guys. Don't uh, you listen to me? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's time for George's tech update. and You got a pile of stuff, 92. I right, thank you very much. I just have to reflect a few minutes for the show, and it starts to flood in. Oh, God, yeah, there was that. And then, oh, there was this. So as Dan and I like to do, we kind of like to reflect on the last week or two of tech that we've been dealing with. And so a few things that just come up that I thought I would share. So... One, um, we've talked about a lot of the voiceover booths, those prefab booths that are out there, right? The usual suspects you've heard us mention, Studio Bricks, VocalBooth.com, Whisper Room, and Scott Peterson right here in LA, who's shipping his booth still. Um, but there's this other company that's been around and still in business, just hasn't really been in the conversation, and that's Gretsch Ken. Gretsch Ken Booths, and they're still around. Yeah, the website looks like it was designed 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's very, very dated, but what they, uh, lack in, in slick websites, they make up for, I think in a good product. And from my client that had one, you know, the takeaway was from what I was hearing, the acoustics were quite good. I didn't feel like I had to give them any notes about the acoustics and which is saying a lot because a lot of these booths don't get the acoustics right out of the gate. So um, the, the downsides really were, well, let's stay, let's keep going with the pros. The other pro what he found was their excellent service. Like when you buy a booth from them, they're clearly all made to order. Um, and they really do an interview with you to make sure you're buying the right product. You know, should, do you really need double wall? Um, do you need enhancements of any kind? They, they really talk you through it over the phone. So again, instead of having a slick, really uh, automated site. They kind of go old school. And if you like that kind of service, you're going to like dealing with them. Um, the only cons that he mentioned really was the pieces that assemble the booth are very heavy. Uh, they're quite massive, larger than most other companies' booth sec- segments. So that's one little gotcha. I think similar in, in a way to the vocalbooth.com, the, the sections are very massive. So be ready for that. And he has to turn off the ventilation when he's recording. So Maybe a small modification with the fan, maybe having a variable speed, you would be able to leave it on, but he did find that to be the only issue. So anyway, just another brand to check out when you're doing your research. Don't, don't skip Gretsch Ken. Um, now, uh, today I was at a studio where as much was spent on dealing with and trying to make sure we eliminate the noise from his heating cooling system from the source... Well, it never really panned out that way. And it's still disruptive enough in some scenarios where a client, a really, really picky one, like a video game producer, 
will say your noise your noise floor is too high which is really frustrating because acoustically it sounds incredible well fortunately for him he happens to be using a universal a universal audio apollo and we all know how i feel about the apollos right overly complicated expensive customer support lacking etc cetera, etc cetera. however there's a killer tool and that's called c suite cvox I showed him how dropping that right into his effects chain, he could real time knock down the noise and completely eliminate the rumbling noise of the forced air cool heating system that was still too noisy in his booth for some, and he was blown away. So if you have an Apollo, if you do a lot of live directed sessions and you're dealing with really picky clients and a family doesn't like to freeze their took us off, is that the way, is that the right way? You use just the right amount, um, right amount of phlegm. Just the right amount of phlegm. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to? Maybe the C suite will save your butt. You don't need this again if you're not doing live directed sessions or source connects. You can do the whatever post is necessary later. But this is a very specific tool that does a very specific thing, and it does it really, really well. And three hundred fifty dollars for the plugin. You better need it because it ain't cheap, but man, it's a, it does a great job. Um, moving on to, if you're using external displays, like a lot of us want to have a bigger display and maybe buying a standard 27 inch or 30 inch monitor ain't big enough, you end up buying a 55 inch TV, okay? <laughs> yeah, you can do that, right? The problem with TVs is they often have a lot of processing on the video signal to make it look as good as possible, especially to make it look really amazing in the retail store right? Extra bright, extra crisp, all the stuff they do. What that does is creates latency. And you know what happens when you move your mouse and you wiggle it? It's like, there's like a quarter to a half second. <laughs> it is super frustrating. And that's what uh, my client today was facing with. After a little bit of research, reading the manual, Googling, we found out that yes, indeed, the majority of these issues were all on the TV side. Once we figured out how to put it in low latency mode, even TVs have low latency and turned it on to basically gaming mode, um, it improved dramatically. So if this happens to you and you're going, oh crap, I bought the wrong display for this job. Don't worry, most TVs, or really all of them, this was an LG in this case, uh, 4K TV, had a way to detune that. It just wasn't very obvious how to do it. So don't sweat it, there's probably a way to fix it. Another thing we were dealing with was HDMI cables. and Man, they are my absolute nemesis. Dan hates them too, I'm pretty sure. We've had, because I have them piled up here from when we took everything out of here. Yeah, we <laughs> we oh my god, the more problems we've had with HDMI cables. The thing about HDMI cables is they're kind of like USB cables in that there's tons of different standards. You know, with USB there was one, one point two, two, three, three point one, and yes, now four. There's all these different standards. Well, HDMI is similar. There's probably even more versions of HDMI cables uh, available. So it is mind numbing and frustrating. And what you pay for the cable is not necessarily gonna tell you whether it's the best cable, has the right standards. So what's the rule of thumb here really? I recommend if you're gonna buy one HDMI cable on say Amazon or something, and you know you don't wanna have to mess around, buy a second one from a totally different brand. Have really? a backup. Really? Yes. Because- See which one works best? See which one works best, <laughs> I'm telling you. Half the time, that cable that you bought, you installed. This way, I went through this, and one of my clients wanted a white cable instead of a black, so she bought the white one. We plugged it in, ran it through the conduit, through the wall, into the booth, on it, and guess what? It didn't work. Uh, I was so frustrated. So we had to come, I had to come back again, and that time I had her buy her a couple extra brands of cables, and that time the first one I tried worked. So... Save yourself time. HDMI cables on, H on, on Monoprice and Amazon are cheap. Have a spare because there's so many standards. I would look for HDMI 2.0 cables at this point. Those are probably one of the most common ones or most current ones. And again, unless it's a really long cable, do not spend more than $20 to $25 for an HDMI cable. Most They can be very grossly overpriced. Lastly, this is just a cautionary tale. If you use your iPad or your iPhone for pro audio sort of use cases, this goes right in there with the, the rule of thumb of not allowing your system to auto update. 
I was stung this week when my iPad that I used on my workstation that I used to control my interface is the Personas that I used, Personas to your uh, Revelator. It updated its software, the UC control software. No problem, right? Except it said, you must update the firmware on your hardware for it to continue working. So that one software updating caused a cascade effect. So now I had to upgrade the firmware on my hardware, which was, I'm telling you, the last thing I wanted to do, okay? Then to get the firmware update, I had to do a software update on my desktop computer, which Persona said, yeah, it just works. No, it didn't. I had to go somewhere else on their website to go download it and install it because it said I had the most current version. Anyway, it was a pain. I spent an hour to two hours dealing with this problem only because I had that software automatically updating on my iPad. So I really do recommend if you're using an I iOS device for a specific job, like running a studio, running a remote, or doing any kind of studio tech stuff, turn off the auto updates. It's in the software settings of your device. Just turn them off and it will save you a lot of frustration when that auto update happens and causes just random BS <laughs> to frustrate you and keep you from working. So that's yeah. my, my rule on that one. Yeah, I've, I've noticed there are a lot of programs that are not catching up to Ventura. Mm. And what have you run into? What's been a gotcha? It's um, sometimes, I, I think I mentioned this last week, it's stuff that is slow to respond. Mm. You can you can see Rosetta sort of saying, uh, okay, let me figure out how this program works, and you'll get the spinning beach ball. Do they start with A and end in E, by the chance, any of these programs? Like mm. Adobe? Are they very Adobe? No, Adobe's working great. Right. <laughs> Every time I watch Adobe ad audition, I watch it bounce on the dock for about 15 seconds. It takes a while for it to load, but it's a big program. Yeah, it is. So, But it's totally worth it, which is why I use it every day. Um, yeah, I've, I've noticed that there's there's little things, and I have a feeling that some of the, the these other apps will catch up and will work. I'm, I'm having trouble with StreamYard for some reason. I think that probably is like... They, StreamYard? Yeah. They, or ScreenFlow? ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow. Okay, because we're using stream for StreamYard yeah, no, right it's, now. It's working great. Okay. And you're all hearing <laughs> us and seeing us. No, but, but ScreenFlow. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me that much, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're always talking about some of these software companies that are like, okay, we're issuing a new thing, and you're going to have to pay for a new one so you can we can show you what we fixed that you didn't like in the last one. Right. So we're paying for their mistakes. Yes. Essentially. Yes. Yes. Uh, <sighs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So. Well, that's my rant. Um, Good rant. Then. You're going to talk about dynamic versus condensers? Yeah. Is that our topic tonight? It, it is. That is our, our, our little basic t uh, topic tonight. I see you have one. I, 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 have, Good old... I have brought my RE20. Yes. Because I never use it. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. Uh, I get a lot of... Oh, there goes that. Uh, I get a lot of uh, questions and people saying, well, you know, there's the, of course, the old standard of what's the best microphone for voiceover. Right. And, and of course, um, you know, I will say, you know, I, I try to keep it simple. You and I are like, look, if you're just starting out, there's no microphone that's going to change the way you read copy, mm -hmm. really. Uh, any good studio condenser microphone will work great. For example... I finally got to use the Mojave tonight that we were talking about oh, a couple yeah, weeks ago. Oh, yeah, that's the MA50. How do I sound on this? I mean, this, there's no processing on this. It's just me and it my microphone. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a great-sounding microphone. And but it's also a great-sounding microphone being used by a great-sounding voice well, in a that great does, location doesn't hurt. Yeah. in a well-treated room with great acoustics. You know, all of the important elements are in this room. That's right, which is the most... Lot of important stuff a lot of white sounds so good right you know i mean if you have a great microphone in a bathroom it's not gonna sound so great right. i once did this video i never i never really put it out there where i was singing something from barbara of seville in the shower yeah yeah you know to, to a show this is what it sounds like and my wife is like no you're not you're not putting that out there and showing <laughs> off your hairy chest and all that <laughs> stuff so, <laughs> so uh <laughs> but why Why is there a lot of people are going to dynamic mics these days? Yeah. Uh, mostly the, the, the popular one is the, the Shure SM7B. Right. 
Uh, and, you know, if you're doing a podcast, it's okay. But if you're doing voiceover, there's a reason why some people would say, yeah, use a dynamic mic. What's the difference between the two? I can give you a quick, you know, scientific explanation. A studio condenser mic is much more sensitive. It, you have to feed it with a 48 volt current. It charges this plate that's in the middle that you can actually see this round thing, which is the diaphragm. And as the diaphragm vibrates with your voice, it changes the resistance in the, in the line. And that's what's interpreted as your voice. And it's because it's charged with electrically, it's very, very sensitive. And you can hear me from this distance away without any trouble, but it will pick up everything else within an earshot of that microphone. So I brought the RE20 in and, whoa, crap. Um, do you have it plugged into a chain? I do, hear it? I, I do have it plugged in. It's cool. like right here. And can, can you, we'll just ignore what went on there. Um, <laughs> that's just, I, I needed to get rid of this stuff anyway. Uh, here, let me, let me, you know, get off this mic. Okay. So now I am talking strictly on the, this one. Why is this not so great for voiceover? One, and this is even with a lot of, oh, we'll say, uh, there's, there's no processing on this at all. A lot of gain. There's, I've got, I got this thing cranked to the top, and of course you're not going to hear any background. It definitely kills off the ambience of the room. Right. But in order for it to work, even with, you know, and I've got, this guy on here, the uh, the fat head on here, to give it a little bit more gain. Oh, you do, yeah. Uh, that I'm, basically turns a dynamic mic into a quote unquote active mic, kind of, because it adds a whole bunch of level to the output of the mic. Exactly. That I otherwise right. wouldn't have. Yeah. Now I sound good on it, but in order to get a good level, I have to talk this close to it, which is what you see when people are doing podcasts or if they're on the air doing radio. And you notice there's an aesthetic to it. An Absolutely. oral aesthetic to it right. that sounds like Dan's doing a radio show. That's right. Hey, it's 20 minutes after the hour right now. Yeah. Right. And, you know, or welcome to our podcast. But you know, It's warm. It's very rich. Right. But it's very broadcast. Right. And the fact of the matter is it's we don't talk half an inch from somebody's eardrum. Right. So that's why we use a studio condenser mic, which, as you can hear, sounds a lot better and a lot clearer. And why do people recommend the dynamic, mics. the dynamic mics? They're great for singers. And I, I guess I got to explain this again. When we're doing voiceover, we're being very conversational and we want to remain conversational. We, unless we're like doing gaming or, or something along those lines where we have to get louder, uh, we're just talking the way we do when we're just having a cup of coffee or sharing a beer or somebody with a, with a good friend, unless you're in a really noisy bar, in which case you're shouting like this and you right. wonder why your throat is sore the next morning. Um, which is why when you go to conferences, use your indoor voice, <laughs> uh, but using a, a condenser mic, it will pick you up clearly from a good distance, like from there. And, yeah. you're, and you're going to hear me. This guy, you got to use really close up. And Another reason dynamics are popular in podcasting and stuff is you can have three of them or four of them all in close proximity to each other. And you don't get... And you don't get a lot of bleed, cross talk right. between all those mics, right? You do that with four condenser mics. One is going to hear the voices of others sitting near you. And yes, indeed, that does create a little bit of a phasey hollow echoey sort of sound so that's another reason why you'll see dynamics much more commonly used in a podcast situation with multiple people sitting around absolutely and uh so but the reason that singers like mics like this is because they can take what we call a lot of high spl this guy was designed as a bass drum mic i mean and that's that's what what uh what electro voice was using it for and what they're what they were selling it as uh, it became popular in broadcast studios because it's uh, why did it become popular in broadcast studios? Because it 
the acoustics in a lot of studios are very bad, especially uh, radio studios. And if you've listened to any podcast, you'll hear that most people are doing them in their living rooms and it doesn't always work. So that's why they will use something like uh, an RE20 or an SM7B. Uh, but it doesn't sound natural, guys. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It just, this is, the, the, the condenser is just much better. Uh, Especially this one. Yeah, well, this is <laughs> happens to be an exceptional mic. Yeah. Uh, and I actually, I actually really like this one. But of course, I also like my uh, my custom built your home built my my home built mic here, which you know I gotta tighten up a little bit. Yeah, this is the from mic parts. This thing sounds great, but it sounds a lot like this one. And and who can really tell the difference? Nobody. Um, only, en only engineers that have like six mics lined up next to each other. Right. Can they get any kind of a real impression of how mics compare to each other? Exactly. So uh, that's my spiel on why you don't use a dynamic mic in your voiceover studio. And I know a lot of people doing it. But the thing was, oh, and that was the thing I was going to show you, is that this guy can take a lot of SPL. And you can yell into it, and it's gonna it's gonna handle it. That's that's the uh, that's the mic that D. Snyder used on the radio for many years from Twisted Sister. Right. You think he talks softly and calmly into the microphone? I don't think so. Probably not. <laughs> but you know, if you talk too loud in one of these, you're gonna overmodulate. So you don't do that. But that's one of the reasons that people you know use them. Great for singers. I do not recommend them for voiceover. Uh, the SM7B is actually a little better than the RE20. A little better, but even less sensitive. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> it needs uh, even more gain. Ex exactly. So, and that's the thing is, you need a lot of gain for the uh, for the studio for the uh, dynamic mics. So, don't use them. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. I'm going to mop up, and we'll be right back with your questions here on Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk. So, don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voiceover Body Shop. It's great. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior. The multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, blue playing back, green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. And for easy giving for the voice talent in your family, get a Voice Over Essentials gift card, too. Well, it's time, yes it is, to thank Source Elements for being a sponsor of our show, the creators of Source Connect, and other tools that are coming down the pipeline. I know their Source Nexus is something that Robert Marshall uh, one of our one of our team over at George the Tech, who also is a co-founder of Source Elements, Source Source Nexus is something he personally is very excited and proud about because now they have something called the Nexus Gateway that allows you to be like the audio traffic cop in your studio. With that system, you can really route audio between different applications very logically and sensibly. It's amazing because what it does is it creates drivers of your design. So if you want to have a sound driver, that's the input for Zoom, that includes the sound from your audio interface and the sound from the output of your DAW, Twisted Wave, whatever. And so both of those can be sent back down the line to whoever's listening. That's something you can do with Source Nexus and a heck of a lot more. So it's something that you might want to check out if you want to have more flexibility and how you route audio in and out of your software. You're more of a power user, not just a basic voice actor. You just have more capability, need more capability. You might want to check out Source Nexus, a new tool set from them that is, like I said, the audio traffic cop in your studio. Well, we thank them for their support. 
Of course, Source Connect is their flagship app. You by now know what that is. So I thought I'd talk about Nexus, something different. Let's get back to this, uh, to all your tech questions right after the rest of these messages. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. All right, we're back. And for some reason, we have Audacity on the screen. Don't need it yet. Sorry about that. Okay, all right. (laughs) Not even going to ask. Well, I will ask. There's a question coming later. I want her to be prepared. Okay, that's that's the most important thing. Well, after spilling an entire glass of coffee on my my Rode Procaster. It's still working. It's still working. I didn't hear any crackling, popping, no smoke. That's right. Now, I'm impressed. You know, yes. all the switches work, and, and that's that's really important. Okay, we got lots of great questions here. Thank you for submitting your questions, because that's what makes this show really work. Uh, yeah. So let's start off with Stephen Pearson. He says, you know, there's a school of thought that when submitting auditions, we should submit two takes in contrasting styles, even when not asked to send two takes. What is your opinion? Uh, well, I, I definitely have an opinion on this. This is one of those things. What does your soul tell you? Uh, you know, when I submit stuff, uh, you now, if the agent I'm working with or the roster I'm on and they give specific instructions saying submit two takes, you submit two takes. Um, as a general rule of thumb, you should probably do that. Um, The thing is, if you're not asked to send two takes and they say send one take, don't send two takes. Right. Sometimes they will say, read the entire copy. Yeah, we know it's a lot of copy, but that's the only thing they'll accept. You read the entire copy. But unless they say only one one read, give them two reads. You know, if it's a short thing, if it's a 15 second thing, you can give them three. Uh, just make it sound very, very different from what you initially submitted or what you initially did. And sometimes I'll read something and go, you know, I really like the way I read that the first time. And then I'll go nuts on a second one. And then I'll listen to that. And I go, you know, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to switch them around and I'm going to put, make ah, that my lead take. Yeah. And because what they're listening for in any audition is how are you going to do it differently from everybody else? Because everybody else is going to do it the same way because that's the, they haven't been trained properly and you're, they're getting a hundred auditions. Just come out and do it differently. You know, not necessarily using a different voice, but you know, how your cadence is and anything that you can do to change it up as long as it fits within the scope of what it is they're looking for. Yeah. So, you know, do a do a normal read the way everybody else would or the way you normally would and then do it differently. And maybe you'll find that by doing it differently somehow, even if it's just weird, just throw it in there. Because sometimes it's not how you do it. It's the, the mere fact that you did it differently that's going to catch somebody's attention. And they're going to go, well, they may not be right for this spot, but I really like the way they changed that or that they came up with a different way of doing that. And they'll remember you, and when another thing comes up, they'll you'll be tops on their list. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, always do two unless they say only one. I mean, come on, that's just magical. You got the Rob Raider question. I was going to tag on to that, too. Oh, please Dan, do. Dan, I mean, I've also heard of certain people 
They might send the same read, but they might say it in one dry and then one with some processing on it. Yeah, that's, there's, there's That has nothing that. to do with the acting. That's just another way of sending two takes. Yeah. Do you feel like there's any value in doing that? I don't know. I, you know, I have been submitting stuff you know, just full modulation with, you know, with, with what I'm using here and yeah. that's what people want to hear. Yeah. You know, they, I mean, there are going to be people who are, oh no, no, you got to use compression. You got to use this. You got to use that. You got to do that. I'm like, I don't know. You know, they're going to hire me because I read it better than somebody else. Yeah. And that's, that's generally the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to show off what a great producer you are or that you understand all that software and all that processing, they don't care. Yeah. That, <laughs> the, the, the people I know that have done that, we're doing very specific kind of things like radio production, you know, where right. production was expected to be part of the, the puzzle, you know. Um, Rob Ryder on YouTube says, have you heard the new beta Adobe podcast, which I happen to know is podcast.adobe.com. Um, is it possible that online processing and the AI that Adobe says they're using might save a lot of work for critical voiceover work. So what are some of the things that are going on? I've heard bits and pieces about it. Yeah, it's it's still in a invite, sort of you have to sign up and get on a list and then wait for them to accept you into the program. So I've only been able to watch some uh, demos. Um, but the bottom line is the AI processing that I've heard in a lot of different contexts is usually pretty noticeable. It's not, doesn't sound, it's not going to fool you into thinking you're hearing raw audio, right? So it's not very transparent. I have been playing with some newer processing tools that do have the capability of giving a very transparent end result sound, such as Waves Clarity VX. That one does an incredibly good job using a form of AI to uh, separate your voice from the background. Um, and when used correctly, is extremely transparent. But I would never rely on so far from what I've heard, I would not rely on Adobe's um, AI engine for sound fixing on anything critical at all. Podcasting, fine, no problem. But not, not things where the audio is expected to sound studio quality pristine. Um, I have to say, I've really never been impressed with Adobe's take on a lot of different types of processing. Um, especially if you look at their presets, <laughs> if you pull, pull up any voiceover, any preset that has the word voiceover in it <laughs> and listen to what it, and then look at the settings, yep. they don't really yeah. seem to understand what the voiceover industry actually is it look, is looking for. Right. So I, I wouldn't trust it. I, I think because, because audition is it's for a, video it's well it's it's audio for video it's designed to really interface with um uh premiere premiere right and perhaps that's the way they think about it that way but yes and, and that's but we as voice actors don't necessarily think of it the same way there's a certain way yeah. we want it to sound you know and i use the presets all the time uh if there's something i you know i want to fix and it's generally because you know you hear the result and you know whether that preset's appropriate. Right. Right. You're not blindly applying it because it has the word voiceover right. in the preset. But <laughs> but here's the thing. I generally don't use these things myself. It's with all the audio that people send me, I'm like, okay, what will fix this if they're not willing to find themselves in a much quieter spot? Yeah. Or if they're not, you, they're not just not able to. Right. And, and so there, there are noise reduction strategies and high pass filters and things like that. Yeah. I try to keep it really, really simple. And sometimes now some of the noise reduction things that I have found, if the noise floor is not that bad and it's at, it's at, at frequencies that are not, you know, harmonic with your voice, they work. Okay. Would I submit an audition with that? My thing is always do the physical thing to reduce the background noise. If that means unplugging your refrigerator, just remember to plug it back in when you're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've seen that one happen a few times. Uh, so yeah, it, yeah, I would tend to agree that, you know, you have to know what it's supposed to sound like whistle uh, and, and try not to satisfy your own ears and let somebody who knows exactly what it's supposed to sound like listen 
and give you that background on how to how to get it sounding right, which is something that Mr. Whittem and I both do. Mm-hmm. All righty. Uh, Ann Grist asks, over overachieving voice actor question. Okay. <laughs> uh, George, what mic boom is visible in your live video? <laughs> well, that's my... Like this shot right here? That one there. That's just your standard uh, banjo emporium... Mic stand? Mic stand, yeah. Yeah, it's an on-stage mic stand. Um, and the mic on the end of it is the Harlan Hogan, the good old Harlan Hogan VO1A that's been in our studio from the from the get-go from Harlan. Yeah, really. Um, but that's all it is. It just, maybe it looks funny because it's sideways. Yeah. Um, for on camera, I didn't want it to be too conspicuous, so I just turned it sideways. But yeah, that's all it is. All right. And now I'm back in the frame, which is... See, that actually worked pretty well. How do you like that? Yeah, no, and, and it's, by the way, an important thing when you're dealing with a boom microphone stand. Now, a lot of people buy the real cheap one that's a tripod. And if you've got a, a small booth, like, you know, like a, a PVC booth and, some, and, and, and blankets and stuff like that, you're going to trip over that. <laughs> and you're going to kick the mic stand and stuff unless your booth is placed in a good spot where you can really push it out and 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 get it out of the way i always use a round metal stage stand for it because one you're not going to trip over it and two you can take a sack of rocks and put it on there and it'll balance it out anyway so it's working here because it's leaning against a table table right right because i have my boom arm way <laughs> way extended out so it would fall over without weight but it is just it is resting against right. a uh, table yeah Interesting to note how George and I have our mics in different positions, but literally we don't because we're both addressing it the same way. He's got his sideways because he likes to do it sideways. Uh, and I like having it like this. Now I'm starting to, there's a great commercial for a, a memory product that starts with a P that I won't mention because it's expensive and it mm -hmm. makes, makes your brain kind of weird. Mm. But this guy in Chicago who says, I'm a writer and I'm a producer. And he's in the studio doing voiceover, and son of a gun, he's got the mic set right. It's upside down. This is the way it's supposed to be. And, you know, the diaphragm in front of your eyes, uh, you know, the top of the mic at the bridge of your nose, and you talk underneath it. In George's situation, he is talking in the same place, only it's sideways. You have to realize that the pickup pattern on a microphone like this is a hemisphere, not a flat plane. Right. And so I can talk to it this way. I can talk to it that way. I can talk to it that way. I can literally talk to the middle of the microphone. I just don't want to address the diaphragm straight on because you get plosives. Plosives. Although this one, <laughs> this thing, this thing is actually quite nice. I like this. It is quite good. Yeah. Yeah. So do I have to send it back to Mojave? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think we get to, I think we get to keep this one. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> All righty. Uh, well, let's see. What is, what's next on here? Uh, what happened to the question that was just there? Uh, I don't know. It's gone. <laughs> All <laughs> right. I but, do that? Well, okay. Well, let's Max Goldberg asks, what does he ask? What's the best shock mount for a 416? Knowing, uh, knowing that this question was coming up. I happened to grab a visual aid. These these are great. I mean, it's it's the same that you would Who's use. Who's that made by? This is made by I don't know. It's made by Banjo Emporium, I think. Uh, it's kind of a generic one. Yeah, I can't even remember what this came with. Yeah, uh, I like the Rycote ones. Yeah, I know those, they're kind of spendy. Yeah, uh, you mean the, the, the ones that look like yes, 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 like this exactly like that one like like this one yes i love those because they do not have any rubber bands or elastics that will wear out ah ever cool so i love those 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 are, that's called the liar l y r e for obvious um, reasons yes made by rycote yeah that's well, my preference yeah i mean you could use this with a 416 oh definitely you know but i'm using it with that's, the this is the, the little video mic go to. Yeah, the go to mic, which is, by the way, a great mic for, you know. For, While you're borrowing the, 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 uh, Mojave, I might want to borrow your video mic go to. Okay. And do some playing. That's a, that's a fair trade. As long as you don't need it. I, I, 
Okay. You know, I, we'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> get that right. But one of these guys, you know, will work great with it. You, you want to have something that's got, gives it a little bit of suspension. And, you know, I've got this one. I've got another one that I use in the, you know, in my booth. Uh, that's just, you know, as long as it's strung up and it's suspended, that's really the best thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. All righty. Uh, Grace Newton's question. Uh-oh. Go. <laughs> I ran Ventura update from my MacBook Air 1 because she listens to the show all yeah. the time and we tell her not to. And Audacity <laughs> wouldn't work, so I had to install the newest version of Audacity. Um, I can't find the time shift tool anywhere on the new version. Did they remove it? No, they just renamed it. And now and we how get to, I know that. <laughs> and now we'll show you <laughs> Audacity. Uh, they renamed it and, uh, oops, sorry, Sue, Sue, Sue was on it and I was on it and we doubled it. Um, the, the version of, let's go back to Audacity. So here's the thing. If you're on Mac, this is one of the best things ever. People never think to do this. If you click on the help, word help and type ser- under the search, and the name of the thing you're looking for, it'll show in the menu bars where that tool is, right? You just mouse down and it instantly takes you to where that tool is. But in this case, it didn't help because they changed the name of the feature. It's no longer got the name time in it. So what did I do next? Well, then I went into the effect menu, started looking down and looked for anything that has to do with speed or tempo. And sure enough, there is actually a change speed and a change tempo plugin from Audacity. I don't know the differences between the two. I don't know where you'd use one over the other, but that's very much likely where the time tool that you were looking for is located now. So yeah. hopefully that works for you. Yeah, it's probably in, in you know one of the things that they really did change the interface on Audacity. Yeah, it's had quite a few changes done to it. Can you guys still see it? Yeah. Um, if I go back here, effects change. Yeah, we're not seeing. We're not seeing it on there. Wait a minute. Oh, did it freeze? No, it's not that it. Fr- well, it's that. It's, oh, it doesn't show the drop down. It's not menus. showing the drop down. Yeah, so you don't see the change speed window right now. That's floating in front. Do yeah. you? For those listening to the podcast, yeah, it's there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I have a change speed window available and that has the speed multiplier and the percent change. So that is definitely going to change the speed of the audio. The question is, it's going to change speed, including pitch. So that's not going to be the one you would want. So the other tool in here is called change tempo. And this is what you would want. Change tempo changes how fast the audio will sound without changing pitch. So that's the tool you're looking for. Right. Very likely. Yeah. They've always had that in audition and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it's, it's fun been to, there and just fun to play change with. the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> See, because go hunting for it. Let's drive people crazy. Let's <laughs> change the name. That. Yes. That's the problem with software design by a free committee. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's just, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But it's still great software it's for, n- for nothing. All the time. Yeah. But what do you want for nothing? What do you have for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's it's in there somewhere. But it, time shift also, I mean, you can move it along the the the, uh, the timeline anyway. Yeah, time shift is for literally moving something in time, right? Forward and back. I but so I, I I'm I'm pretty sure she's talking about. Yeah, but if you you highlight a section, I could be wrong. I might be just, off base just, there. To, are you actually asking about moving the thing in time? Or are you talking about speeding it up or slowing it down? That's Am I giving you the wrong? I might be giving you the wrong answer. All right. So apologies. So yeah, but if it's moving stuff within the, within. Oh, that looked like a. Did it look like a hand? Yes. Yeah. In order to get a tool like that anymore, you have to. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh. You have oh. to use. Thanks for mentioning this. You have to use multi-tool. Right. Yeah. For whatever reason, the dedicated time shift tool is gone. If you choose multi-tool and then put the mouse on the name at the top of the clip, now you can do do the time shift. So that's the time shift we're talking about, not tempo. Got it. All right. There you go. There you go. I knew that was. 
she was probably asking. Yeah, that's so frustrating yeah. that that would just disappear. Although the uh, the spectrogram in Audacity is really good looking now too. It's not that you can do a, not that you can do a whole heck of a lot. With yeah, it, but it's still a little bit weak, but it's getting better. Yeah. All right. Okay. Enough about Audacity. All right. Uh, <laughs> David Lee Hawks on YouTube says, "Dan, I need to get my home studio checked out, and." learned how to streamline my Adobe Audition workflow. What to do? Uh, Sue, you know what to put up there. Uh, it's pretty simple. You go to... Home Studio. Home VoiceOver Studio. There you go. Go to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com <laughs> and contact me through there, and we'll set something up, and I can... Uh, I will do a consult with you, and since you get all your equipment... That's great, and I will show you how to set it up properly and how to use it properly and how to create a very usable workflow within Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is great uh, for some of the simple things it does. Uh, and uh, it has other things that are for other things other than voiceover. Mm -hmm. So you, what I can teach you is I can teach you is less is more and that a lot of what you have to, what a lot of your sound has to do with your physical environment. So I'm finding people are just going nuts with, I, I got to find all of these things to clean up my audio. Well, how about just cleaning up the place you're in? You know, makes it a lot easier. Although some people say, no, it's not because I live next to the airport. In which case I say, well, you live where you choose to live. Uh, okay. Yeah. So go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and contact, just click, you know, contact Dan and I'll, I'll happy to set something up with you. Next one, Kevin Lowney. All right. Kevin's question is, good news, I added ventilation to my booth. <sighs> Bad news. I can hear it in the recordings. <sighs> what might be better, a gate or noise extraction using a sample of the noise? So I guess noise extraction is similar to like the noise tool in, well, since we're in Audacity, they've got in Audacity noise reduction Let's see if that's the tool they're, they're yeah, yeah that, that one they're calling it noise reduction. Well. Yeah, as long as you're using it lightly, lightly, right? Not more than twelve dB of reduction. You know, don't go over, don't overdo it. Um, it does a pretty fine job, and that's probably the tool you'd want to use over a gate. Gates, as we know, are kind of a sort of an audio on-off switch, right? Yeah. That means like every time you start talking, the gate opens. And whatever that noise is becomes highly noticeable as soon as you speak. When you stop speaking, the gate will then shut again and not always quickly enough. So you hear the voice trail off. Then you hear, <sighs> yes, that would be a really <laughs> slow closing of the gate. But yes, that is exactly right. And that is bad. So gates are very rarely useful for voiceover. There's a variation of a gate called an expander. I have had pretty good luck using them, but again, it depends on the severity of the noise. Right. More severe noise probably is going to need something like a noise reduction algorithm. And sometimes I will use both. Yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to ventilation, here's a, here's a trick that I learned while building my own booth and my own ventilation system. Yeah. Put a rheostat on the fan. Slow down. And slow the fan down. Look, it, as long as you replace the air in a booth every day, two or three minutes or so you're not gonna you're not gonna be smothered by carbon dioxide no. and it will and it will keep it cool uh it does not have to be at full speed so if you can change the speed of the fan and you can do it you can get a rheostat that'll if it's a 120 volt fan you can slow it down and listen to where to the point where it's not making that noise and most of that noise is not coming from the fan it's coming from the air movement within the ducts and so that's turbulence. Why, yeah, exactly. And that's what you want. And that's what one of the things you want to prevent. And that's, you know, what a DAW box is for, where it, it diffuses the sound and, and reduces it. But if you can play with the speed of the fan, that can, that can make a big difference. Oh boy. As well. That is so crucial. Yeah. Just check on the motor your, your fan uses and make sure you can find a speed controller that works with it. DC motors are by far the easiest to control the speed of without any, without any difficulty. So. You might need to do a little research. Yeah. Uh, let's see. David Lee Hawks says, George, are you not a fan of the DeClicker and Audition as well? I didn't say I was not a fan of Audition's plugins. I said I was not a fan of Audition's presets. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's different. Yeah. The plugins in Audition are really good. Um, 
And I've managed, even though the, the declicker tool is not by any, by any means new, I don't think they've made any improvements or changes to it in many years. It still does seem to help a lot of the time without causing any real bad artifacts. So it's not terrible. Um, is it as sophisticated as an algorithm as you might find in, say, Isotope RX10 mouth to click? Mm, probably not. I doubt it. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. You know, it's experiment with the tools. And if it sounds good, it is good. But I'm just saying, sometimes the presets that you, when you load the plugin, there's a long drop down list sometimes of different preset options are way off base, you know, and it's the ones that are literally called sometimes male voice or announcer or voiceover or narrator. They sometimes make some bad choices because they didn't talk to me. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> or Dan, they didn't talk to us voiceover engineers, obviously, when they made their presets. No, so yeah, not against Audition, Audition's uh, plugins, just some of the presets. Makes total sense. All righty. Well, uh, we're out of questions. Oh, yeah. So, oh, wait, Jeff Slough snuck in there. What was Lau's email from, from last, last week? week? Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, good. You know what? She kind of didn't really say explicitly what her email address was. Right. So, well, I'll edit that in next week for, for the week that you're at before this. Yeah, I'm going to find it for you right now while Dan wraps up the show. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. All right, All right Sue is now waving at us madly and saying something. Okay, sounds like uh, it's a movie. I... <laughs> It's on the screen, guys. Is what it's, she's it's there. To tell it's, us. it's right there. You can see it on the screen. <laughs> it's lau l a u lapidus l a p i d e s company at gmail dot com. Thank you, Sue. Is that what you wanted there, Sue? Thank you very much. Thank right. you, Sue. All right, and uh, all right. Well, thanks for all your questions, guys. That's great. Uh, these were all very good questions. Yeah. And so, uh, I think the more folks listen, the better the questions get because absolutely. they become more and more high level. They, they've gotten the basics out of the way and now they're getting into really honing down into real specific issues. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're going to come back. We still got a couple of things we want to mention, so don't go away, but we'll be right, be right back after these messages. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. We're back. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
Next week on this show, it'll be December 26th, the day after Christmas. So we need to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And, of course, you're probably watching this all week. It's Hanukkah every night this week. (laughs) So hopefully you'll get a new microphone one night and... You know, maybe, you know, a mic stand the next and a know, mic cable the next, you know, maybe a Harlan Hogan sign, you know, and one of those things, you know, <laughs> or g- the gift certificates, which are pretty good over uh, voiceover essentials. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to do on the 26th. I'm thinking we should have a little holiday party show along with Tech Talk. Yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe invite a few friends over and then we can. Let's see. We can manage to pull off. Yeah. Let's see who will we'll see who shows up. Uh, on January 9th, we will have Kelly Mozinski from The Voicecaster. We haven't, oh, had excellent. Them, we haven't had her on since I think I was in Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. wow. And, and then on January 23rd, we will have Jason Lanier White. Awesome. We of, got January all stacked up already. That's all great. right. You know, and I'm still trying to get a hold of Maurice LaMarche. Okay. With it, and his Anybody big... know his email address? <laughs> <laughs> I'm help. his friend on Facebook. Maybe that'll work. Try that. Try that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we need to thank our donors of the week, uh, like Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Shelley Abellino, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Designs, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Donnie, Diana Birdsall, sorry, Diana, and Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Miller. All right. Yeah, you can donate to our show. Just go to our homepage, vobs.tv, and there's all sorts of things you can do there, like watch every episode ever recorded of a voiceover body shop and eWabs, uh, along with. Uh, a donate now button. You can, you know, you can give us a one-time donation. You can get, you know, if you think, if you think that we're giving you great value for what you're paying for this, which, you know, if you don't like it, you can get your money back. Um, but if you'd like to donate to the show, uh, greatly appreciate it. It helps with the technical production of the show. Uh, let's see. We need to plug our jobs, <laughs> which <laughs> on our business is homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you want to work with me on your home voiceover studio, cause I'm a lot of fun. Uh, or you can work with George. Yeah. Who's also fun. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just found out because my assistant got it up online. Our next webinar is official. We're going to be doing it January 5th, 3 PM Pacific time. And it's going to be called Next Level Production and VO Recording Techniques for 2023. Wow. So it'll be like kind of be looking at, yeah, some of those AI processing tools, software maybe you hadn't thought of trying yet, um, introducing you to some, maybe some tools and techniques that you will save you some time or maybe just drain your wallet. (laughs) Show up and find out. All right. I think I'm going to show up for that one, see what you come (laughs) up with. Uh, we need to thank our amazing sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and, and WorldVoices.org, the O-R-G. industry. Yes, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Please join us today because we lots got lots of cool stuff for you, uh, and we're here to help you make money, not make money for us big difference with some of these other organizations and stuff. I won't mention any names. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for doing yeoman work in the chat room tonight. Uh, Sue Merlino, just getting it done as our director and waving wildly at us and going, what? And, and Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Uh, we'll see you back here on the 26th. And uh, with our next guest or whatever it is that we're doing on the 26th. So enjoy your holiday. Stay warm. Stay cool. Do whatever it is you need to do. Uh, Just make sure that your audio is sounding right. And you got to work with us to make sure that it sounds the way it's supposed to. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech talk. 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 Have a great week, everybody, and enjoy the holidays. Cheers.